How's it going everybody? Greetings from Nerdiest Dime and today we are going to be taking a look at Zeta Toys Mini Superatron or Legend Scale Superion. But we are going to be starting us off with a twofer, that being their Legends Air Raid and Skydive. Now I don't actually remember their names, I'll put them in the title. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at Air Raid first. And I gotta say, for a little F-15, I'm actually not terribly upset about it. Not exactly one-to-one, -one, but one has any F-15 jet form that looked one-to-one. -one. It doesn't look awful, I will say. The cockpit area is the best part of this because it's, again, almost one-to-one. -one. The cockpit itself does open, reveal seats, They're seats, I guess. And yeah, the intakes are actually nicely done. Lots of detail for what it's supposed to be. Uh, the armature for transformation is exposed, unfortunately, but it doesn't look as hideous as other ones in this set. Now the wings. More, the most important detail about Aerid. His yellow is awful looking. It's just that. Like, the yellow paint on this set is just not pretty. This is the worst case of it. The red is slightly better, but that ain't saying much. And the silver is... It's fine. It's not awful. It could have done a lot better. As you can see, I got a little bit, uh, bit of silver scrapage here. Yeah. It's not terrible. No paint on the dorsal wings, though, which is ridiculous. Like, I mean, how many times has he not had colors on his dorsal wings? For fuck's sake. Thrusters don't look awful, though, I will say. But yeah. The silhouette, however, from the top is freaking flawless. Look at that, that is incredible. Bottom on the other hand, same thing, it looks flawless until you, if you don't acknowledge this too much. Now uh, that's worse. And he has faux landing gear just so he doesn't have to rest on his, on his poor old titties. Yeah, let's look at Skydive. And he actually does have the better jet just because it looks super sleek. Look at that. Again, like Air Raid, the Nose cone section is the best part because it is almost one to one actually, and I'm quite pleased with that. Very, very pleased with it. Intake is pretty much flawless. Cockpit does open. It looks like the nose cone is supposed to do something because it is a separate piece, but it does not do anything. Not that I have found anyway. I get that push down. The wings and the lightning bolts are actually not awful, but the it's the camera that makes it look much better. And there's even some molar detail to indicate the toy accurate detail, which is, or I think toy accurate, yeah, or combiner was accurate, which is pretty cool. The yellow paint on here, though, is way worse in person. It's not very good. Like I said, I probably could have painted this better myself, and I hate yellow paint. It's awful. And another, it's slightly better on here, only because of the gorgeous metallic blue base, and it looks like they actually tried to coat this yellow. But regardless, it it's fine and it being a single thruster jet the fact that it even is pretty much flawless oh and speaking of jets obviously f-15 strike eagle f-16 tomcat it's actually quite well done and faux landing gear as well anyway let us get down to some size comparisons let's start with optimus uh i'm not a big fan of core glass optimus he's not awful but I mean, the truck mode is just weird, honestly. But hey, this exists. It's definitely not to scale like at all, but it it exists. It uh, exists. Core class Starscream is only slightly better, and by slightly I mean because the scale difference between these two. Yeah, big difference. Big, big, big difference. So it's not. It's kind of ridiculous. Like yikes. But hey. It's not terrible, honestly. He has the far more accurate and sleeker jet uh, F-15, but his is a uh, more cute and pocket toy-like. I'm not even wasting time on this. I, this is just stupid. I'm doing it for obligation's sake. Uh, pocket toys blast off. Yeah, no, just no. I mean, this ain't any better, but uh, pocket toys vortex. Oh, sorry, I bumped the camera. <laughs> yeah, not again. Not that much better. They technically only come with two accessories, though. That being the blasters you see before you. The other way. 
Uh, there's uh, air raids, and it doesn't look awful. Like, some molded bits of detail and a little uh, energy bar here to, rep to represent the ammunition lift. Very nice. And same with uh, skydives, it doesn't look awful. More pea shooter than I would like, but hey, it does the job, has the energy bar too. Now, I recommend on skydives blasters, I also would probably recommend doing it on uh, air raids, uh, trim the handles down. They're obnoxiously long. And you'll see, and when you put them in, under his wings, you can see the ports. When you trim it down, it's now a lot more flush to the wing. Although it does stick out a lot more than I would like, it's, uh, it's serviceable. Closer. There we go. We got his blasters. And let me show you air raids when they're not trimmed down. If I can not drop it, please. Let's put that here. Put it here again. The ports are really high up for no reason. There. And there you go. As you can see, it really sticks out on the wings. Yeah, it looks a little ridiculous. But hey, you down with blasters. They also come with these. The combined mode feet. More specifically, Silver Bolt comes with these. I still don't get why they did that. Why not just make them pack with, you know, the limbs? But it's good. It's it's still really good. Like these are great looking feet. I'll get more into them when we talk about Superion, but we'll go into transformation in a bit. In other words, we're going over transformation right now. Now I'm only going to do transformation of just air raid. I'm not going to do skydive, I'm only going to show you the difference between the two that kind of separates them. But regardless, let's get down to it, move blasters. It's actually quite simple, we're going to go into combined mode, then into robot mode. Flip up the tail wings, uh, bring up the thrusters and wing tail wings, unpeg the rear of the jet and wings like so from these circular locking points. Now, for some reason, this wing is really loose. It wasn't like this for a while now. Interesting. Now, we rotate the wing. Or actually, wait, no. We're going to do that actually later. Now that these are uh, disconnected from the front of the fuselage, bring this up. Rotate this out of the way. Open this hatch here. Then stop opening. Then extend out to reveal these armatures. Close that. Then, now we collapse like so. Bring these bits together. The cockpit goes under. Uh, tail wings and thrusters goes over. You have these interlocking sliding uh, tabs that will go into these slots here and it will lock it into place, which is quite a good idea, which is actually really good. I quite like that. We're gonna leave this up for now. Oh, we rotate the wings like so, or actually, wait, no, like this, uh, hold on, one second, okay, I figured it out, you want the wings like this, so that way you can have room to fold the ends of the wings in, then rotate like so, to where it will sit flush to where, uh, it would be for jet mode, so, put in, rotate, bring up, and it will sit flush. Now, bring in combined mode foot. We've got these interlocking tabs and slots that will go in like so. Prep, use the white one because it is the proper side. Then this will just slide up and will lock him into place. Such a sturdy connection. Then bring this down to where it will be flush. In combined mode, make sure the nose cone is flush with the top. And there we go. You have airied in leg mode. Let's get skydive over here. So the difference is you bring the intake here, split it in half, bring this out, and slide it down. Take this piece here, fold it to either side. I, I just go with the right. Then again, uh, cockpit under, thrusters and tail wings up, and then slide in. It's actually quite tight. Then just just to where it sits flush against the back and there you go now you have these two in their leg mode and i'm actually quite a fan of it i'm actually really a big fan of these legs 
They're not very bulky, like ignoring this. They're not very bulky, however, they're very athletic. They are big, blocky legs, and they're very sturdy looking. You got your ankle tilts, you get your ankle leans, I don't know what you would call this ankle pivot, I guess. There, 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 we'll go over articulation and combine mode, but yeah, it, it does suck though in this configuration, you can't store air raids weapons. But regardless, let us get down to robot mode. And as stated before, we will not be going over Skydive transformation because, I'm going to say it right now, the aerial bot designs suck ass and they all transform identically, so it's not going to be showcased here. So, yeah, suck it aerial bot fans, your favorite combiner and team have awful designs. Anyway, so let's get this out of the way and get the foot out of here. Get that away, and it's already disengaging. Uh, so first things first, we take this piece and let's spread out the wings for now. It'll make it a lot easier for transformation. That, then breathe, then separate at the base, and the double hinge, like so. Split the shins, then extend until you hear a. And that lets you know it's locked into place, and it is locked. It is some good force to just put it back. Same thing on the other. Oh, and uh, expose the foot. Uh, let's now close the wings this time. Uh, if it will let me close the damn wings. And swing this around until it's collapsed into place. Then bring the wings up against the shin. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. Click. There we go. Swing foot around, rotate it, collapse wing, rotate around, and collapse sh calf plate, like so. And then get the legs all done. Let me do this real quick, just the fuck it beep. Then we swing the arms out, and there's a cool little bit, a little feature they did I actually quite like. When you swing the arms out, there's a side panel that comes with it, however, as you can see, when you go all the way up, it auto morphs to the side. Here's the problem. Let me extend the arm right now to show you. The shoulder itself is actually too tight, while the shoulder at the base inside the torso is too loose. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, so now you want to be nice to me, huh? Well, screw you then, aerial bots. Let me see if this side does it. Yep, there you go. The shoulder does not lock into place. And this does not lock into place either. This should have found a way, they should have found a way to have this lock into place. That is really frustrating. And just now swing the hands out. That's, that's dumb. Why does that one have to be so nice to me? And anyway, bring these out. Let's bring this out. Swing this out. It is the head. Then bring this in. There is a little tab. Little focus, a little tab right there that will go into this. Can you focus? Go into the slot right there. And it'll lock into place. Rotate head around. Let's fix up the backpack now. And there. Oh, hold on. Make sure this is correct. Make sure the armatures have it like this. And make sure the nose cone is sticking way up. And with that, we have Air Raid and technically skydive in their robot modes. I'm just gonna give them their blasters anyway, it doesn't matter, but besides that, I think their robot modes aren't awful. They don't look terrible for them being downsized masterpiece figures. Not a good idea. Uh, yeah, they're fine, but again, this is just my bare bones disdain for the aerial bots. Their designs are fucking atrocious. Seriously. These designs suck! Like, wow! Literally the only time they even did something new and it was awesome was the War for Cybertron games. Guess what? Only two of them got the, those new designs. <sighs> Lovely. But anyway, let us get a close look at those heads. Not the chest. Heads, eyes up there. And yeah, love the heads actually. Even if I can't really tell the mouth because of the paint they used. But it's hard to pick up. Uh, okay, let me get a better, let me get a better light on this bad boy, because it is not flashy. Look at that metallic blue paint on those eyes. It is gorgeous. 
it is stunning. Here's the problem though. Why are they light piped? They have no need to. The item, stop advocating for light piping. It's really breaking figures. Please stop. But yeah, decent head. And skydive. Again, I would love this face more. I love the orange face. If it weren't for the fact that orange paint they use breaks up all detail. And as you can see, it isn't even finished. It's not even finished on the top. Again, though, the lovely blue paint on those eyes is just delicious. So nice. And the metallic red they used, almost like a metallic pink in it, actually. I really do like the, that color. It's quite exquisite looking. Very nice. He's far more detailed than, uh, than Air Raid, but honestly, it's not saying much. It's better than nothing, though. Love the gun metal here. Let me zoom out, actually. He's not terrible. They don't look terrible. There we go. The baby jets. Uh, <laughs> I love. If there was one design thing I like about the aerial bots, is the baby jets. It's the only thing about them that is actually kind of nice. The baby jets. And yeah, very not terrible at all, honestly, not at all. Yeah. Let's get uh, down to some articulation. Let's begin with a ball joint at the head, which can, because it has a cutout for the socket, it can look up that far, and if you want, all the way up, actually get him out of here so you can stop the screen on my focus, you can look down a little bit, it undid itself, but if you want, you can use, you can undo the chest, if it'll let me, there, you can undo the chest and you can have him look down a little farther. Which is helpful because he's a quite a large lad. The shoulders aren't a single joint that can only get you out to 90 degrees, which is just fine with me. Bicep swivel. And can do a full 360 at the shoulders as well. A single jointed elbow in the fucking bicep that gets you under 90 degrees and looks abysmal doing it. Why is it not in the forearm? I don't know. He also has a shock of shocks, a waist swivel, and it's much easier to utilize if you have all of the uh, jet mode kibble out of the way. He can do the full splits on a universal and not a fucking ball joint, thank you. They also have hip skirts that can move out of the way to accommodate a full split going forward, and if you move the jet kibble, they can go back pretty far. Also a thigh swivel, a single jointed knee in the thigh, that can get you 90 degrees, which is nice, but it looks awful and the proportions make it worse. And there is a ball joint at the toe, which can get you a tilt very far, and there is a hinge at the base as well for transformation that can get it all the way up, and all the way down for transformation, but as you can tell, it's useless to go down. So only go up or tilt. Otherwise, don't bother using it. And yeah, he's actually they are decently articulated for what it is. Oh, and no wrist swivel, sadly. Yeah, they're not terribly articulated, but besides that, let us get down to some size comparisons. He's starting with a core optimus. And I really like that. I really, really like that. I don't have a Magic Square Optimus, I sold it, but I know for a fact with Magic Square Optimus, he scales practically flawlessly. Because, like, for me, all of my aerial bots are either slightly taller or the same size as Optimus here. And same with my Seekers, they're all the same height as Optimus. I love this, this looks so nice. So, if you like tall aerial bots like they should be, then get yourself a Core Class Optimus. Core Class Starscream, and yeah, this is where the scale just looks weird now, because again, these two are the same jets. Yikes, that's weird. But, hey, it doesn't look awful, per se. It doesn't look awful. Pocket Toys Vortex, which actually, again, looks very nice. I like how he's not as tall as the Aerial Bots, but he's shorter. But he's still about, I think, a slightly taller than Core Optimus, which looks just great. So, yeah, there's that. And Pocket Toys blast off showing what the fuck is wrong with scale. 
Again, this is probably how tall he would be realistically. Like, let's see, let's say his this where his feet are. That's realistically where his shin, his uh, hips should be. Yeah, shuttlebots are big boys. So that's been my look at the Zeta Toys aerial bots, or at the very least, skydive and air raid. Uh, this is going to be a decent looking combiner for a part one, that is. I will say for a first time owning a Zeta Toys product, not terrible. A lot of my problems with these guys is not the fact it's Zeta Toys, it is actually the fact that they're aerial bots. I despise the aerial bot designs. Again, TFC showing up where Zeta Toys did not. They are not very good designs, they are awful designs. These are fine representations of it. They are a bit clunky, but their articulation, however, is actually quite decent. Hell, it can get off a, po a, a passable superhero landing with uh, the leg bots. Not terrible. I'm actually more a fan of their leg modes because they are both very needy, but also quite athletic. Just look at them. The way they've done it is just perfect to me, and I especially love how well articulated they are. We'll get more on that when we get to Superion. In that actuality, the jet mode is their best part. I think they're really stunning. Even in a lot of shots, they just really look good. Especially top-down ones, or hell, uh, sky-up ones. But, I hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you all have a lovely day, evening, or night. This has been Nerdiest Dime. Rolling out.